What is the fastest racing line for a Formula 1 car on a racetrack? In this video, we are going to optimize the racing line into one of the most iconic race corners in Formula 1, the Cops Corner in Silverstone, the British Grand Prix. Welcome to Ingenious! In the last video, we solved the brachistochrone problem using numerical dynamic programming. In this video we will use the same algorithm to determine the optimal racing line for a Formula 1 car. Let us start with discussing the algorithm that we will be using. Let us say we want to go from A to F. A is our initial state. F is our final state. Let us say there are two stages to cross to go from A to F. Every transition has a cost. For example, the cost of going from A to B is 7. These are the possible paths to go from A to F. Which of these is the most optimum path that has the least cost? Dynamic programming gives a way of solving this problem. Here is how the algorithm works. We start from the last stage. The least cost to go to the destination state, F, from D, is 8. This is easy to determine as there is only one possible way to go to F, from D. Notice that we have also marked the optimum direction with a small green arrow. Similarly, the optimal cost to go from E to F is 6. Moving on the prior stage, we focus on state B. Now, there are two ways to go from state B. One towards D, another towards E. The minimum cost of going towards D is 2 plus 8, which is 10. The minimum cost of going towards E is 1 plus 6, which is 7. So, the optimum way forward from state B is towards E, and the least cost from B to the destination state, F, is 7. The optimum direction is again marked with the green arrow. These little arrows are going to be important in the second step of this algorithm in navigating the optimum path. They are telling us which direction to head to for the minimum cost. Similarly, for state C, the optimum way forward is towards E, with the least cost of 3 plus 6, which is 9. Again moving to the prior stage, there is the initial state, A. The optimum way forward is towards B, with the least cost of 7 plus 7, which is 14. Now that we have calculated least cost from each state to the destination F, we can trace the most optimum path starting from initial state A. All we have to do is to follow the little green arrows we had marked in the previous steps. These arrows guide us on the optimum path. Voila! We have now determined the most optimal path from A to F. This algorithm is very generic and can be used to solve variety of optimization problems. Now, we will use this algorithm for determining racing line of a Formula 1 car. Here is a typical turn on a racetrack. We break down the racetrack into multiple stages. Each stage has multiple states. The objective is to find the fastest path through these states. Let us focus on one position, CX. At this position, car's position is fixed. At this position, we know its x-coordinate and y-coordinate definitely. However, it can have any velocity vector. So, one bubble you are observing here is actually corresponding to multiple states corresponding to all the possible velocity vectors. Let us focus on two states, C5 and D6. C5 has a velocity vector V5 pointing along the straight. D6 has a velocity vector pointing slightly upwards. To be able to apply dynamic programming algorithm, we need to be able to find the link cost, that is, the cost to go from C5 to D6. The cost of going from C5 to D6 can be divided into two components. First one is the time consumed. It makes sense to have time in our cost since we want to minimize it to go fastest. Second component is cost related to constraints of car physics. Let us evaluate both. Average velocity vector to go from C5 to D6 is the average of both the velocity vectors. 
The distance from C5 to D6 is expressed as subtraction of their position vectors respectively. Time can be calculated as the distance by the average velocity. This gives us the first component of cost. For the second component, we calculate the penalty due to violation of physics or car limits. One obvious thing to note is that the average velocity vector and distance vector should be pointing in the same direction. In simple words, movement of car has to be along the average velocity vector. If this is not the case, the given transition is not feasible as per physics. So, we charge a very high penalty for this transition, something like 10 to the power of 6. This is the first penalty. For the second penalty, we first calculate the force required for this transition. Force required to take the car from C5 to D6 is mass into acceleration, plus, the aerodynamic force acting on the car. There is a limit on this force due to the limited friction offered by the track and the limited engine and brake horsepower. To simplify things, we can assume a limit of Fmax. If the required force is higher than this limit of Fmax, we charge a high cost penalty. This completes our cost calculation. Here is the summary of the algorithm we will be using. First step is evaluate costs for each link by using the equations we just discussed. Second step is to calculate optimal cost for each state from last stage to the first stage. Lastly, select the most optimum path going from first stage to the last. We are going to use a Python script to solve this problem. Here is the Python script. Let us run the script. This is a part of the Silverstone track leading up to the cop's corner. As you can see, we have divided the racetrack in stages. Each stage has 11 possible positions, which are shown by the small circles. However for every position here, there are a number of possible velocity vectors. So, to capture all the possible states, here is the 3D view of the racetrack with all the possible states. The added dimension along z-axis represents the variation of velocity vectors possible at each position. Isn't this intriguing? We will attempt to find the optimum path through all of these stages. This is the beauty of the numerical dynamic programming algorithm. It can break down a given problem in stages and find the optimum path. Here is the optimum path determined by the dynamic programming algorithm. Car tries to stay on the right edge of the Wellington Strait to get maximum traction into Brooklyn's corner. Stays on the inside in Luffield corner. Just kisses the left edge of the track through the woodcoat and out on the straight at full throttle. Heads to the cop's corner. Kisses the inside of the cop's corner and exits on the left of the track heading towards the maggots. To get the idea on how we are tracing through the stages with different velocities, here is the optimal path with the 3D view of the track. Higher up the stage, higher is its velocity. You can observe that the car takes a slower speed through the Brooklands corner before climbing up the speed stages again before maxing out on the way to the cop's corner. Cop's corner is pretty high speed corner. Car doesn't lose a lot of velocity to navigate the corner. There you have it. The fastest racing line through the cop's corner determined using numerical dynamic programming. Please hit the subscribe button if you found value in this video. See you next time. Thank you.